Hey there guys, what's going on? This is Headfalls Neil bringing you another review for, or the next review for The Mandalorian, so Season 2, Episode 5, The Jedi. So I've had a chance to watch the episode a couple of times, and so I'll get into that in a little bit, but overall I thought that the episode was very well done. It introduced a very key um, Clone Wars character, Rebels character, and overall Jedi to the story. And also introduce one character, sort of by a name drop in the from the um, Star Wars expanded universe and from Rebels as well. So with that, I will jump right into it. Um, I will also preface the episode with a uh, big spoiler alert because of the um, two spoilers for the episode. We do get a name for the child finally in this episode, so. That's less of a spoiler, not really anything that affects the plot too much, but we kind of get that it's not necessarily the character we thought it was, or thought he was, so uh, with that, let's jump right into it. So, as I mentioned, I watched the episode two times. Um, I watched it originally Friday morning um, during the day, and I found that the episode was pretty darkly lit, so not necessarily as bad as Game of Thrones. Um, darkness but it was pretty hard to see a lot of the action um the action did take place on a planet that's kind of hazy and foggy so i want to chalk it up to that i did rewatch the episode friday night again and i found that it wasn't necessarily poorly lit it's just that if you're watching with too much ambient light basically sun natural sunlight then it's going to be hard to watch the episode but if you do watch in the evening with less ambient light then it is a lot easier to watch the episode a lot of the show is interesting to watch and it is very well done much like the rest of the series so with that out of the way um overall this review is going to be three parts i'm going to start with the name of the child which is we can start i guess technically no longer calling him baby yoda or the child his name is grogu which um i guess it's okay of a name i was kind of hoping for a name along the lines of similar to yoda and yaddle so i was joking with a friend something like yedu or yeldu or something like that something with a y that kind of merges yoda and yaddle that probably would have been the low-hanging fruit to go for in order to get a name and it probably would have been cheesy but that's neither here nor there so at the moment i'm kind of indifferent for grogu it's kind of easy and hard to remember so i'm just calling the child greg for now just because it's easier to remember um overall i thought it was an interesting name drop it was good to have a name and how we learned the name was pretty good via the spoiler alert in this episode um and then i found out or we learned in this episode as well that the that um grogu was a child in the um temple jedi temple on coruscant during the end of the clone wars and i didn't i missed a, or i heard that in the first watching of it but i didn't think about it so i decided to go and see if he was in the youngling scene from attack of the clones and of course he wasn't there but that's also because he was there towards the end of the clone wars and attack of the clones was pre-war so um, of course he's not going to be there so i can get that little thought out of my way um and at the very best, he was probably a couple of years old by the during the events of Attack of the Clones, so he may or may not even have been found by that time. So there is that bit of information as well. So with that out of the way, I'll jump into the first big spoiler for the episode in that we finally get to see Ahsoka Tano live action in this episode. And overall, the character was very well done. Um, in talking with a couple of friends, I did see, or they did, or one of my friends at least mentioned that um, her headpiece kind of felt off and weird. But I want to say that I also chalk it up to her being older than we saw her in Clone Wars and Rebels, and also the stress of living in the Outer Rim um, outside of the Jedi Temple for that long, the effects of war, having to help people, stress, and all of that would affect. Um, her look as well so overall it was a good introduction her um her look was very well translated from the um clone wars and rebels animation so they had plenty of time to work on the digital look of her so bring her to live action was well very well done um i guess the easiest part would be getting her face covering and clothing the hard part would be her headpiece so compared to the next spoiler that I'm going to be talking about, her look was relatively easy to do. 
And I kind of hope that we get more of her either in the season finale to help them out in DeLorean or in the next season or in the spinoff that I'm going to get into next. So the final bit of revelation in this episode is that Ahsoka has been spending her time in the Outer Rim looking for Grand Admiral Thrawn and um, we don't know why as of yet. It's probably related to the tie-in to the end of uh, Rebels where are we... Um, Star Wars Rebels, so, so where um, I guess the crew is scattered and uh, Thrawn is out for, and I'm trying to recall recall my memory for what he's doing out there. But since the Empire has fallen, um, he, there must be something going on that he's up to. My initial theory at the moment that may or may not pan out is that he's wor- that he's actually above um, Gideon, Moff Gideon, or he's working with Gideon. I, I'm not sure too much of the power structure. Maybe even Gideon is above Thrawn because um, Gideon is a moth and Thrawn is Grand Admiral. So maybe two sides of the same coin or maybe they're equal in rank where Mo- Gideon is more of the bureaucrat and Thrawn is more of the military man. So um, that's neither here nor there, but my main thought process here is that Thrawn and Gideon are working together to create to do something with uh four sensitive people four sensitive beings and uh grogu was one of them that they've been using so one of those things to either rebuild a jedi army or maybe build our own um army of force users so i'm kind of curious to see what they do here and uh what happens um my final thought for this is that they're, that Thrawn is going to be introduced as a season two finale cliffhanger, either in Shadows or a Revelation on the Bridge, or maybe even by Hollow Vid, where Gideon reports something to him, or he he's reporting something to Gideon that maybe Ahsoka has been found, or maybe Grogu has been found and recovered, or something along those lines, or everything's going to be tied up on Tython. Or they even meet up on Mandalore at some point. But I think Mandalore might be too soon. So I think there's... My current guess and hope is that there's going to be a big showdown on Tython. Um, and then the final thing here is... Or point to think about for is that the reason they haven't introduced Thrawn as of yet. Is that they wanted to get his look and feel just right. So the uh, blue dude from uh, Season 1 that we also saw early, earlier in Season 2. Was the prototype to see if how they can animate the look and feel of Thrawn and um, the blue dude is maybe a Chiss or just another race that looks similar to the Chiss. So now that they've got his animation and look and feel and speaking abilities down, they can now introduce Thrawn into the series in live action, either via spinoff or a villain in the Mandalorian to have that sort of... um, battle and i want to say that there might be um uh there was a battle at some point between the chiss and the mandalorians um to so that might be that could even also be a um possibility and doing a quick google search there was a chiss mandalorian war so between the chiss ascendancy and the mandalorians um that happened after the Battle of Yavin, so it's possible that we are gonna get this kind of um, battle at some point in either this season. Or I'm gonna lean towards next season, so the my guess is that season two is gonna finish with the introduction of um, Thrawn via Gideon and Mandalorian, or the Mandalorian on Tython, and then season three is gonna be building more towards that or the rebuilding of. Mandalore and then a final battle with the Chiss Ascendancy. So that would probably be an interesting thing and then maybe even a spin-off series or a spin-off movie with about the Chiss Ascendancy via the uh, novels to provide a visual backstory with Thrawn. So that's all there is for this particular review. Quite a bit that happened so um, quite a bit of speculation so I'm kind of curious to see if maybe we're gonna see Thrawn in this series or via a spinoff. I'm kind of hoping maybe there's gonna be a season with Thrawn being the next big bad villain, and the Mandalorian building up the uh, build, rebuilding Mandalore with Bo-Katan reclaiming the dark saber, and um, Thrawn and Gideon wanting to get the child or getting Grogu back, and also reclaiming the dark saber for themselves and whatever they want to rebuild the Empire. So that's all there is for this review. So 
If you have any questions, comments, feedbacks, or anything like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is PatelN01.com for past episodes, subscription links, and all of that good stuff. And of course, you can now support the show on Patreon at Patreon.com slash PatelN01, where you can get early access to, or access to, um, review, or, um, summaries of what so, uh, reviews are coming up next. Um, I did, a uh, initial hot take for this particular episode of the Mandalorian so you could get things like that and provide your feedback ahead of time as a supporter and patron of the show and all of that good stuff and of course the base is the simple thing is that if you want to help support the show and um, help keep me going that is of course the other thing to do and you have my thanks for that but that is all for this particular review thanks for tuning in and until next time